Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and I would like to thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Go ahead and throw a like on this video when you get into it. And um, hey, if you haven't subscribed, let's do it together because 2021, things are going to happen. Before we jump into the meat and potatoes of this video, talking about the 50th anniversary 43mm Redline Sea Dweller and whether it's any kind of a Rolex investment, let's go ahead and get the quick fist watch check out of the way. And here it is. Look, guys, this is a watch that we're going to have to talk about. Um, it's a Loom Tech. It's the first one I've ever had handled or, or, or felt. And um, I, I'm so far, I'm very surprised and and pleased. I, w I wouldn't have thought so, but holy cow. We'll talk about that another time because today the topic at hand is Rolex and the Redline Sea Dweller as to whether it's an investment or not. Now, you may not be familiar with this model, maybe you are, but just in case, I have one and I'm gonna drop mine in right here. Here we have the beautiful and chunky Sea Dweller 43 millimeters, and you can see the crown between Swiss and made. That's what makes this a Mark II dial. The Mark I dial does not have that crown in that position. Okay, so guys, I've got a letter here. It is from Spain. It is from Victor Alvarez from España. Okay, it goes like this. And I'm going to read the whole thing and then we'll go back, pick it apart and, you know, we will gently um, mock and or compliment Victor depending on what, <laughs> what it is that he's asking. Um, oh, and before I, before I even go there, if you would like to ask me a question and or be gently mocked on this channel, markgoldberg8 at gmail.com is your contact email address. Okay, Victor writes, Hi Mark, I am a longtime viewer and I just came across your latest YouTube video on how to lose money with Rolex specifically talking about the SD4K, that is the Sea Dweller 40 millimeter version that was discontinued after just a few years, versus the Sea Dweller 43, which is the watch I showed you just a moment ago. Victor continues, I have a quick question. <laughs> and then, you know, it's not such a quick question. I have a quick question looking for some advice from an experienced collector to a less experienced one. I bought the SD43 in May 2017 from a local authorized dealer. My intention was to wear it at first, but it stayed in the safe for three and a half years and quickly became an investment piece. I did wind it every quarter or so to keep the movement healthy and the oils moving. The watch was very accurate at first between zero and negative one seconds per day. Two months ago, however, I started to wear it sporadically around the house and noticed that the accuracy fell below minus five, so it was slow um, slower than negative five seconds per day on average. I called my Rolex service center and they offered to regulate it, which I doubt will fix this problem. There seems to be a fault in the 3235 movement, which suffers from sudden drop in accuracy after some time, possibly due to an unexpected friction on the second hand pinion. No permanent fix for this, just change part and lubricate. This could be a design fault, meaning the problem will probably manifest itself again later on until Rolex finds a permanent fix for it, but I'd be out of warranty. I don't like the idea of paying the RSC 900 euros where I live every time I visit them for the same problem. The issue is documented on TRF, the Rolex forum. Here's my dilemma. The watch has pretty much become an investment piece. I'm not really planning on wearing it, but I'm not 100% sure. If I take it to the RSC, they will remove the stickers and the watch will lose value. Also, they could scratch it or damage it. Should I leave the watch as is, mint and stickered, and not take it to the RSC ever? What would you do, Mark? Thanks for reading this. Take care. Victor Alvarez from España. Victor. Victor, Victor, Victor. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's go back to the beginning and pick some of this apart. We'll do it together. Okay. So he bought the SD43 in May 2017. First of all, that would mean it is a Mark I. Um, Mark I has to do with the, the, the dial um, and whether there is a crown between the words Swiss and made. Some collectors feel like the Mark I is going to be more valuable than the Mark II, which is the one that I showed you that has the crown between the Swiss and made. But you know, prices on the used market do not seem to be bearing that out. In other words, Mark I and Mark II dials are going for virtually the same money. Now the next thing is, you, you know, Victor, you found that you were getting different accuracy levels based on whether you were just winding the watch 
and timing it or whether you were actually wearing it around the house. Well, you know, these things are regulated and the, 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 the difference in how the watch is gonna perform will have something to do with the position in which you are resting it and leaving it. So it may just be that when you were, you know, winding it and setting it down on a table or putting it back into the safe, that you were resting it in the ideal position, but in normal wear, you know, the watch is moving around and fighting gravity a little bit more. So, um, and you say that the accuracy fell below minus five seconds per day, but you didn't say how much below. Um, and it is a, it, it's chronometer certified, superlative chronometer, so it's not supposed to be more than plus or minus, what is it guys? Correct me if I'm wrong about this in the comments, you know, plus or minus two, isn't that correct on a Rolex these days? And that's why your RSC offered to regulate it for you because it's not falling quite within spec. But you said this will not fix the problem. Y yes, it will. I mean, look, I, I don't care what kind of weekend warrior stuff the TRF forum is telling you. You know, the RSC is, is, it is a competent service branch for Rolex Sociedad Anonima, which is a manufacturer located in Geneva, Switzerland. And do they make the occasional mistake? Yes, but do they make giant mistakes like the secondhand pinion of the friction is the oil no <laughs> I can't even recreate you know the the technicalities of what you said look my friend unless you are you know a PhD in engineering with a particular specialty in watch movements I think we have to trust that Rolex is a little more qualified than us at designing their movements can they regulate it for you yes is it safe well that's really the question will it fix the issue yes it will but will it cause other issues let's talk about that part so here's the issue there Will they remove the stickers? Yes. If you take it to the Rolex Service Center, I mean, we can't be 100% sure about this, but I think that there is a great chance that they will remove stickers. The question really becomes is, does that matter? You know, does that matter? And that goes to the heart of you calling this an investment piece. I gotta tell you, the, the Redline 43 millimeter Sea Dweller as an investment piece, if it were an investment right now, it would be performing pretty badly. I mean, Charles Schwab would, would, would give it like a C minus and it would, it would have it on the sell list, I think. Or maybe if we were really lucky on the hold list, but it's definitely not on the buy list and here's why. Those guys retail for around $13,000 by the time you get out of the you know, store with tax and everything and then what are they selling for on the gray market? $13,000, maybe 14, depending on condition and year. And really that's pretty much true of both the Mark I and Mark II dials. So if it's an investment, it's performing very badly. And actually in terms of the, the history, we gotta look at the historical transactional nature of the Sea Dweller line within the Rolex. And honestly, it's been an underperforming watch for 30 years. I mean, if you have a 30 year old Submariner, it will have done way better than a 30 year old sea dweller. And there's really only one exception to that um, or two exceptions. There's a couple of little exceptions where the, um, where the red line sea dweller, the Comex version, I mean, some spectacularly rare sea dwellers were produced. And, and yes, those have performed very well. But in general, the whole line of sea dwellers has really lagged way behind the Rolex Submariner. And that's because the Rolex Submariner, very similar watch, but with slightly less um, spec. In other words, it's, it's spec'd at a slightly lower diving level. It, it's, its capabilities are a bit less. They're very high, the Submariner, but it's, it's a bit less than what the Sea Dweller is, which is kind of more like the professional diver's watch. Even though professional divers don't really wear watches, they, they wear dive computers. But nonetheless, it's a throwback to that era. And here's the thing. The Rolex Submariner icon of the line far outperforms the Sea Dweller. So the only way I think that that Sea Dweller red line becomes what I would call an investment piece, something likely to skyrocket into the future. It, it would have to be bucking the trend of what it has done in the last 20, 25 years. Not that they don't go up, they just don't go up in the same proportion as things like a sub or a Daytona or pieces that are considered even rarer. Don't get me wrong, the Sea Dweller 43 millimeter, it's Rolex steel sports. So it's not like you can just watch, you know, waltz into the authorized dealer and buy one. You probably have to beg and plead a little bit, but of all the dive watches, it's probably one of the easier ones to acquire at the AD. Why? Because it's not in the hugest demand. Now, where do I think it becomes an investment? Here we are entering the great unknown. We have to go into the if, okay? The if this, if that, if the other. And if Rolex at some point takes that silly little line of red where it says Sea Dweller out and they turn it white, 
then yes, that red line sea dweller all of a sudden is going to be coming extremely valuable and you'll feel bad if you ever sold yours. But honestly, how can we predict that? We don't know. That thing could be in production for, well, it's, been, it's been a few years now, three, four, and it could stay in production for another 10, 15 that way. In which case, I don't really think we're looking at that much of an investment piece here at all. Now, you're also a little bit nervous about taking it to the RSC in case they should scratch it. You know, honestly, on some level, I want to gently mock you for this, Victor, but the problem is I have read in my own comments lots of anecdotal examples of customers saying that they took a watch to the Rolex RSC and the one I've heard more about than any of the others was Dallas, and that the watch came back with a mark or scratched. So I, I guess it is a possibility that that could happen. I really, something in me wants to say, it's impossible, it's Rolex, They're, they should not be scratching your watch. But apparently this has happened in the past. Although I, I think they deal with thousands upon thousands of watches, and if this was an endemic problem, we would really be hearing a whole lot more about it. So I think it's kind of like the occasional thing. I think what I would be more concerned about if I were you, would be the stickers more than anything else. You can stop worrying about the pinion and the seconds and the flaw of the movement and whether it will or won't be in warranty and whether it's gonna cost you $900. I mean, if you can't afford to service the watch, then you can't afford to own it. So here's what I would say. I think you should wear that watch. Honestly, I wear it until the stickers just fall off. That's what I would do if I were you. You're gonna have so much more enjoyment of that watch if you wear it. Now, do I wear mine as a daily? No, because I find it a little bit big, a little chunky. Um, it, it, if I compare it to my James Cameron, it's certainly a much, much easier watch to wear than that. But nonetheless, by the end of the day, I'm getting a little tired of it. So it just depends on the size of your wrist, Victor, and, and how you feel about the weight of that watch. But it, it's a beautiful piece. I would worry about it much more about having spent thirteen, fourteen thousand $14,000 or euros if I were you and having the thing be like the object of your obsession where you're my precious, my precious, are you three seconds, you know, are you two seconds, is your pinion okay? It's a Rolex and, and you have like, you still have warranty on that watch and you will for quite some time to come. It is robust. It is made to go down into, into the depths, into the chasm, you know, of the ocean and still remain fine. So if you are in Gijon, España, go right out into the Atlantic, go straight down. You, you, you will never be able to go down as deep as that watch. It's kind of a beautiful piece. So if I were you, I would just enjoy it. Stop worrying about making money or losing money on the thing. Because here's the thing. Watches with wear. You know, they're, scratches are the new patina. Wear is the new patina. Do the unworn stickered watches go for a little bit more than the de-stickered ones? They do. But when you subtract the amount of enjoyment that you could have had for the, from the thing, I think it's definitely a winner to just wear your watch. Victor, feel the steel against your PL. That's my advice to you. Guys, I would like to know what you people all think about this. Should he take his watch to the RSC and get it regulated? Should he worry about it? Or should he just wear it like what I was saying? And moreover, what do you think about the SD43 as a watch? Would you rather have that? Would you rather have a Submariner? Like and subscribe this video. Let's talk about this again another time and soon. This is Goldberg. Peace out. Paint the sky.